I told you that I would show you how to model this. This is an RC circuit. I'm going to show it to you in just a little bit. Let me describe it. We have a 3 volt battery. We have a switch. We have a 3 ohm resistor, which is this light bulb. And then we have a 1 farad capacitor. I'm going to turn it on in a second, but let me sh let's start with a couple measurements with the voltmeter. So I'm going to turn on my voltmeter to 20. And what do you think? Let's just check the voltage across the battery. So I'm going to connect this to the battery. I'm just going to touch it. My setup's not perfect here. So if I, if I drop something, and you can't see it anyway, I wish I could touch that right there. Nothing. There we go. Oh, I missed it. 3.17. 3.17. Okay. Now, before I close the switch, what's going to happen? What, if, what do you think the voltage from one end to the other end of the switch should be? What do you think? So, right here, if I measure that. Let's do it. So, I'm going to clip this. There. So, that way you can see. And now, I'm going to touch this. Three point nine, and in fact, some weird stuff can happen there. I'll tell you right now. We can talk about it later. But some weird stuff can happen depending on your voltmeter uh, when you measure that, and I'll tell you why. Okay, so what I want to do now is to model. We know we already know that the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time looks like this: EMF one minus e to the negative t over rc. I know what that should be. This is 3 volts, t is time, 3, a, three ohms, 1 farad. But I want to get another way to plot that same voltage. So let's turn on the, the switch. Let's close the switch. Let's see what happens. Um, we're going to look at the brightness of the bulb as a function of time. So as the capacitor voltage increases, then the loop rule says that the current will decrease. That's why if this is 3 volts, that's negative 3 volts. So the loop rule still works whether the switch is open or closed. right? As I add up the voltages around the whole thing, I know there's no current, there's no charge on the capacitor, so that's 0 voltage, 0. That has to be 3. That has to be. So that's what it is. Now when I close the switch, the voltage across the capacitor is going to increase, and so that means that the current will decrease. right? When I close the switch, there's no charge in the capacitor and the current will be IR, but then it would decrease. Okay, so let's watch that. I'm going to actually pick this up because I can hold it now and we can do it a little bit closer. Ready? I'm going to close the switch and the, the bulb's on and it's getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And we want to model that and see if it's the same as that equation. That's what we're going to do. Okay, I'm done with this. This is going to be awesome. You guys are going to love this. Okay, so let's just take this equation and set up the loop rule. So I know I have a current I there, and there's going to be a charge Q on the capacitor. So if I do the loop rule going around here, I'm going to get, I'm going to call this uh, EMF. So I start from here, I get plus EMF. Now I go up here, I'm going in the same direction as electric current, so I get minus IR. And then I'm going, this is going to be plus, that's going to be minus, right? Because the if we think of positive charge moving this way, even though it's negative charge moving the other way, then the positive side is going to be here, the negative side is going to be over there. So as I go across, I'm going to get a negative change of potential, and it's going to be negative Q over C, because that's the change of potential across the capacitor is Q over C. So that's my loop rule equation. And the problem that we have with this is that the charge in the capacitor changes because of the current, and that changes the voltage, which changes the current. So it makes it a very complicated problem. However, we can cheat. Let's say I is the change in charge with respect to time. That's our definition of current. Current is the flow rate of charge. Now, if I look at this for just a very short time interval, then I will have, the current won't change. So I can use d delta Q over delta T for the current. Let's go ahead and put that in. I'm going to say EMF minus delta Q over delta T R minus Q over C equals zero. That's my equation. 
Now what I want to do is to take this equation, break it into a very, very short amount of time. So let's say uh, delta t is 0.01 seconds. And during that 0.1 seconds, if I assume the current's constant, or the, and the charge and the capacitor is constant, I'm sorry, well, it's true, then I can solve for the change in charge on the capacitor. I can solve this for delta Q. Let's just solve this equation for delta Q. Oh, I should have left that up there. Oh, well. Okay, so I'm going to add this to both sides. I get delta Q over delta T R equals EMF minus Q over C. Now I'm going to multiply by DT and divide by R. I get DQ equals delta T over R times EMF minus Q over C. Now what can I do? Well, if I, if I do this problem in 0.01 seconds, I can find the, the new charge in the capacitor, which is going to change. So I can actually use this delta Q to find Q2. So let's say the charge on the capacitor starts off at Q1. Let's even say it's zero. Q1 is zero then Q2 would be Q1 plus delta Q. But now once Q changes, I can redo this for the next time interval and calculate the new delta Q. Delta Q is not going to be constant. And I can keep doing this 0.01 second, 0.02 seconds, 0.03 seconds, 0.04 seconds. I can keep doing this forever until I want to stop. Okay, So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off with my initial values for Q and the current um, and use that to find the change in Q for each time interval. Now, if I want to do one second worth of data, I'm going to have to do this 100 times because I have a, a time step of 0 0.01. So that suggests that maybe I shouldn't do this manually. Maybe I should do this with a computer. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a computer. So I have my values here for R. I, I'm going to start off with Q equals 0. I have EMF right there. Let's just get to it. I'm going to do this in Python. I'll give you the code down below. I am using WebVPython just because it's online and it's good for graphing. Uh, let's just go ahead and make a graph. We're going to make a graph. I want to make a graph of the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time. So G1 equals graph. Uh, title equals RC circuit. Let's call it that. Uh, X title is time. In seconds. The Y title is going to be equal to VC in volts. And then I'm going to give it a width of 400, a height of 200 just so it fits on the screen. And then I'm going to need something to plot. That's a curve F1 equals G curve color equals color dot blue. Okay. Now let's go ahead and put all our constants in there. So I said R is 3, uh, C is 1, 1 farad, EMF is 3 volts, um, Q equals 0. I'm going to start with an uncharged capacitor. Okay, So Q is 0, T is 0, DT is 0 0.01. And let's run this for 5 seconds. So I can do that with while t is less than 5. Now the first thing I want to do is up here is calculate my equation for delta Q. I'm going to say dQ is equal to, right there, dT times uh, parentheses EMF minus Q over C. Right? That's exactly what I have up here. Now Q starts off as 0 and that's fine. Uh, and then I need to divide that by R. Now once I have dQ, I can find the new Q. Q equals Q plus dQ. Now, if you're not familiar with Python, uh, this is a make equal to statement. This is not an algebraic statement. So this is take the value of Q, add the value of dQ, which we just calculated, and make that the new value of dQ. Okay, so that's not, the Qs don't cancel. Now I do need to do, one. I'm gonna plot it. There's a question about whether I should increase time or plot first and I'm not a, I can never figure out what the best thing to do is if you have a small enough time interval nobody cares so let's just plot f1 dot plot I want to plot the voltage across the capacitor which is q over c so I'm going to plot t versus q over c 
and now I'm going to update time. If you don't update time and see it, then your loop will run forever, and that's just awkward. Okay, so don't do that. Okay, do you think it's going to run? That's a very simple program, right? It's a very simple program. It might have an error. I don't know. Sometimes I have errors. We all have errors. It didn't have an error. Okay, so that's for five seconds. You can see that the voltage is increasing up to some constant value. Let's actually run this for uh, 10 seconds. And you can see that it's going to reach a constant voltage of three volts, which is exactly what we'd expect. In the circuit, when the current goes to zero, the voltage across the capacitor should be equal to the voltage across the battery. Let's run this for a little bit longer because I think maybe 15 seconds. I want to see it really flat. There. Nice. Okay, now what we need to do is to take our uh, theoretical expression, which I erased, and see if we plot the same thing, if we get the same thing. So let's do that. Let's make another curve. Uh, F2 equals G curve. Color equals color dot red. Yeah, you can make two graphs, so no problem right there. Uh, so I'm going to calculate VC, and this is going to be the theoretical VC. VC is going to be equal to, uh, what is it? Uh, EMF. No. What did I say? It was EMF minus, yeah. EMF minus um, E, which is exponential, negative T divided by R times C. I don't know why I blanked out on that. That is right. E minus, yeah, that's right. And then as T gets very, very large, then we're having, uh, it goes to zero and it goes to EMF. That's right. Okay. And let's plot that. F2 dot plot. T V C. Why did that do that? EMF. Oh no, no, it's one. <laughs> it's one minus. EMF times. Did I? I think I wrote that right up there. Because this doesn't have units. That's that's right. There you go. Now you only get the red curve. Why is there not a blue curve? Because the blue curve's there, but it's right under the red curve. They're identical. Let's just play around with this. What if I make a time step that's bigger, 0.1? So in that case, my assumption isn't as valid. The theoretical calculation is theoretical, so it doesn't matter what the time step is. And you see they're not quite the same, but they're still pretty good. Let's change this to 0 0.5. Okay, so now right at that first step, it jumped up here because I plotted it after I updated it. So it's not quite the same, but it's still pretty good. Okay, so this is what we call a numerical calculation using the Euler method. And you can do it for a lot of different things. You can solve different equations that you couldn't otherwise solve. So there you go. Same thing. Doable. Awesome.